So hello everybody, and uh, congratulations on the AI Festival. Um, so first of all, I'm an AI researcher at heart. I worked, uh, I did my PhD study in AI, and uh, uh, decision making and planning, and uh, did research for about 10 years, research and development at NASA for uh, developing and applying technology for decision making. Uh, it's just because it's Halloween that I decided to dress up as a scary administrator, <laughs> and that's why I look like this. No, seriously, that's, uh, I was really hoping that I could be here and provide some welcoming remarks when the, at the start of the festival, but I was otherwise engaged. I had promised a long time ago that I would be talking about education and innovation at a gathering of leaders of the fishing industry of Iceland, which is a very apt place to talk because it's actually one of the most technologically advanced industries we do find in Iceland, which may come as a surprise. But it's nice to note that, uh, in fact, that is an industry that has applied into production some of the machinery that they're using, AI-based solutions developed here at RU, namely solutions designed to minimize overweight when packing fish into predetermined sized packages. Very important and a great example of what AI can do. Now, uh, I'm gonna say a couple of things also because uh, we're actually linking this to an occasion that is worth uh, noting here. Uh, we're celebrating uh, this year that 50 years have passed since the uh, Technical University of Iceland was founded in 1964. This is a university that merged with Reykjavik University in 2005. And it's worth it to acknowledge the fact uh, that this uh, event 50 years ago was a very important step forward in terms of technical education in Iceland, as was the founding of Reykjavik University in 1998. And we have continued on this path since then, and are very happy to be the leading university in Iceland when it comes to technology today, and will continue to foster research and education in all aspects of the technical fields. Now, to the matter at hand. So, education, innovation, and research in AI. So, this is one of my very, very passions. So, I'm very happy that I have a couple of hours, right, to talk about this. Um, you're not going anywhere, are you? Any plans? So, the first and foremost, you know, before you start talking about what you want to do in education, research, and innovation in AI, the first thing to realize is just what a fascinating and important field this is. Now, first of all, this is a field that is driving us to try to understand something we have a really hard time understanding, namely intelligence. It's one of those words, we talk about it all the time. We talk about people being intelligent. We also talk about people being not a lot intelligent sometimes. But we have a very hard time nailing down how this whole thing works. So it's a fascinating scientific endeavor. But it's also one of the key components that is going to make it possible for us in the future to actually interact with all the technology we're developing. Our technology is getting so complex that we can't talk to it at the level at which the technology operates. We need something in between to translate for us, to understand what the technology can do and help us operate it, and that's where AI comes in. And finally, we are facing a great deal of problems. Um, some of the ones that are mentioned are sustainable transportation, uh, transportation solutions, how to deal with aging, the fact that uh, as the populations in the world uh, grow older, we just don't have enough manpower to take care of older people. Some solution from technology needs to come in there, and AI is part of that. Now, this is a really, really challenging field we have chosen. So if I go through really quickly uh, the key components of these three areas, the education, innovation and the research. Education, AI education is essential. And I would very much like to see it being a cornerstone in information technology education, robotic education, and even into engineering education. But it's a really challenging thing. First, first of all, in order to start talking about the methodology of AI, you need a very good foundation of computer science. So you're not exactly starting at the freshman level. It's a very young field. It develops very fast. So it's hard to get firm foundations which you can put into the AI 101 classes. There is a limited availability of established systems and things that we can build on. 
So the approach that we need to take in this is this twofold approach. We need anywhere we can have a solid theoretical knowledge that we can build on, use it, make it clear, get it into the student's head, but then first and foremost, let them learn AI by doing. Research also is very interesting and very challenging. Um, AI has one of these fascinating, uh, uh, one of the things that is fascinating about AI is that there are so many unsolved problems. If you're going to do research in, in math, there's just 2,500 years of history that you have to sort of, you know, surpass before you get to anything. In AI, you know, we can name three problems that nobody has solved yet, and you can start working on them if you want to, if you dare. Um, so it's also a very, it's probably the most fascinating research area also, but I'm slightly biased there. Um, but the tricky thing about it is how fragmented the research still is and how often we have a hard time connecting things. And I was just listening to Chris's talk and I'd already made the notes and decided that I would say this, but his exemplar was perfect. So he's tackling a problem in AI that he wants to do something with. He has to start by creating a new programming language. He was just lucky he didn't have to rewrite the operating system, like some AI researchers actually I know have done. And this makes it tougher for researchers to build up uh, on foundations that already exist. To do this, to address this, we need to find the balance between identifying what we can utilize as core subjects and core components, and the small problems that we're solving, such as in decision making, how do we connect that to the very, very large problems without always having to start from scratch? So finally, innovation. Uh, I mentioned already that AI is a very important thing, has a lot of applications. We have a lot of areas where we can apply our technology. But it's a tricky thing. And one of the things that we have sometimes found is that AI suffers from the problem that anytime we actually solve something, people stop calling it AI. It just becomes an algorithm. Um, text understanding, actually character understanding, optical character recognition used to be an AI problem until somebody figured out a solution for it and now it's called an algorithm. Uh, speech recognition, just turning, you know, uh, the words into, you know, spoken words into texts. That's just an algorithm now. You just download it from open source somewhere. And this is a very challenging thing. Furthermore, we have the challenge of people not even noticing when we apply our technology. I worked at NASA for 10 years. Uh, we did a lot of different stuff. Uh, one of the biggest projects I worked on was to provide scientists with a tool, AI-based tool, that would allow them to decide how much they could make the rover, Spirit and Opportunity, do each day. They had to decide each day what the rovers are going to do, and we had a tool based on AI that helped them. Now, they used this tool for six months, and then we got together for a meeting to sort of take the status of, of how things are going, um, you know, whether people are happy with how the mission is going, and they were ecstatic with the tool. They, they said the tool has saved them so much time, created so much science, they estimated that it had given them 40% more science than they would have gotten otherwise. And then they turned to us and said, but we are so sorry, we never used the AA part of your system. Of course they were using it, they just didn't notice it. So this is one of the things that is challenging about innovation. So what do we have to do when we're talking about innovation and the application of AI technology? is we have to keep highlighting the accomplishments that we have made. We can't let them be forgotten or pushed away as simple algorithmic solutions. And we have to continue pushing for applying our technology and making it relevant and making it visible. So that we can, as AI researchers, continue to disseminate, continue to educate everybody about what we're doing, continue trying to understand this, continue to do our research, and we continue to infuse our technology into the future for the benefit of everybody. So thank you very much. I think I'm out of time. And enjoy the rest of the day in the exhibition.